We're going to delve into cartoon takes and how to get accents. In this session, we'll concentrate on the takes. This is the basic pattern of a cartoon take. A person sees something surprising, goes down to anticipate the accent, which pops up and then he settles. Sees, goes down, goes up, settles. Here are a bunch of formulas and variations of Hollywood takes that they worked out in the 1930s and 40s. Takes. <laughs> takes? This is, yeah, takes. I have to get my brain back into this business. Takes are obviously, you know, double takes, triple take, you know, takes or double take, you know, or, or triple take. Takes, these are formulas which they developed in Hollywood. I'll give you, these are Hollywood issue takes. Here's the uh, standard Disney take formula. I'll give you timings on these things which will work, but th you can vary them. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, set rule. This is drawing one. Down here is a sort of squash drawing. This is number three. This one, is number six. I'll circle these just for clarity. And then back here, he settles back down. Okay. The rule in a, in a Hollywood squash, an effective one, whether you do it subtly or horribly crudely like this, is to keep the same amount of meat in the head. Same mass in the head anyway. Okay? So however they distort it, that should have the same, what do you call it, circumference? Volume. Same volume, mass, volume, however you distort it. Okay, and the timing on this is one, two, just smack in the middle. There's no easing out. You just go straight into that one. And then you go three, two, six is four, five, six. Um, so you'd have five would be in the middle going up. That'd be five, and four would be here. Two would be there. I would keep the eyes shut, actually, personally, all the way up, just so that you get a pop. And this just looks like you got electrocuted. They go, oh, and they're immediately, um, uh, immediately uh, cushioning down. So this is number 10. And you, there's six, seven, eight, nine. So you'd be six and seven. I would keep the mouth open on that one. Go, getting smaller slightly. Eight. Nine. Okay, that's your standard Disney, or well, I, I think the Warner Brother, Brothers one is a little different. That's your standard Disney take. Down on twos, up on ones, and down on twos. Now here's a slight variation on it. 
We go down on ones with more drawings, up on ones, two frames at the top, and continuing down on twos again. Here's the same thing with a full figure. We've added some extra drawings as he settles. Okay, can I change it now? Okay. We're going to make this one number eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Keeping the same timing. We're just going to alter, so this becomes 12 here. And we're going to have four draw. We could do it like this, or we could do it even. Three, four, five, six. Ah, good. Oh, good. That's what to do. You don't need the other. That's going to work great. OK. And on the going up drawings, in the middle, and that's going to be six. It's going to be another one, seven there, another one, five. This should be bigger. Five and four. OK. What we do. His number four is a drawing like this. He's got his head over here, like this. Looks like uh, this. Okay, four. Five, you push the head the other way. It's, it's just like that. Okay, six is back this way. Six will be back this way. Seven, back over here. Okay, seven. Pop. So you get a you get a immediately down, which you'll hardly see, and then a boom, 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 ah, cushion. So, boom. Boom. What they would also do when they got up there, and Babbitt worked this one out, they would have the arms, once, once it was settled down, you'd have an arm go this way, around that way, and the other arm do this, going around that way. We've used the wobble head going up to the top, and we've added the flailing arms countering each other. So we now can see the Warner Brothers take. It is a little different. Here's the rabbit. Here's the down, which is num this is number one. The arms might go up like that, although not necessarily. 
That's number four. Down. And five is the actual take. And then you, that's five. And then you cushion down. To, uh, to the. to number nine. Oh, I see. Here's the chart on that. It's one to four is the cushion. And then you pop into five. OK? Five then goes uh, six, seven. It's even. Here's the same thing with the mouse all shot on twos. Here's a variation on the same pattern. I don't like takes. And uh, when I first learned these from the various guys, um, I had trouble with them. I, I, because I didn't, li I didn't like the squash and stretch too much and you know my prejudice. But I got a commercial. It was called Super Can. It was a sort of silly, um, looked like a Marvel comic thing. And this Superman was called Super Can. And it was special soup or something. He drove up in a car. A butler opened the door, and he got out, and he ran up. Another butler opened the door of a mansion. He ran into the kitchen where this duchess is eating soup, surrounded by butlers, and her husband's the other end. And I forget what happened. They sent for Super Can, you see. And I did 19. I said, I'm going to study takes on this commercial. I did 19 takes. I had Superman drive, Super Can drive up, and he did a take when he saw the butler. The guy opened the door, and he saw Super Can. And he, he did a take. Ran upstairs, the butler opened the big door, and he did a take. Ran into the room, the lady's eating soup, and she did a take. And the butler, behind, or her husband behind her, he did a take. I forget what happened, but I got 19 of these. And I tried, uh, I think, eight Disney takes and eight <laughs> Warner takes. And then I mixed them up a bit, and the Disney take was best. But it's worth trying, you know, messing with these things. There's a very small difference between these two takes. The Warner Brothers takes pop up from the squash position to the surprise position, and then they ease down. In the Disney take, you in between your way up from the squash position to the top surprise position and ease down. Disney, generally, Disney was working to make impossible things believable, uh, heading for naturalism. Disney called it the plausible impossible. So they work to make things more natural, more subtle, but believable. All the information that they developed spilled over to the smaller studios like Warner and MGM, who had less money, but uh, just went for stuff that was direct and comic. Cruder, but funnier. Let me show you the Warner one again, done real crude. Number one. Two, four, two, three, here's four. Oh, really? Uh, five, six, 
squash. More four, uh, five. Right, one to four, yeah, one to four, five, we pop into five and settle back down. To 11, the same. Ah, uh, here's a slightly different spacing, slightly slower. It's your break now, six. That might be a little nicer than just going down like this. So that gives you a little bit more cushion up there, a little bit more down there. By pushing the nose down further, we get more contrast. Same thing now in profile. Here's an interesting thing Art Babbitt showed me. He was always going on about delaying parts whenever possible. So he would do his piece of animation and then he would delay parts of it and see what happened. So here's a take of his, the guy. This is one. And here's his pelvic area. And he's going down. Would be four. Uh, this would be eight. Um, and he settles twelve. So the timing would be here. Wait a minute, one going to four. It's a different spacing than the others, different from the Warner. And we go from four to eight, and then eight back to 12, eight, nine, 10. Yeah, it's good timing that. But what he's done is he's uh, he pushes the the pelvic mass up to the neck. And he would do that. He said, "Try it," <laughs> and then when the thing shoots up here, push it down again to below there. Well, it's too big. Um, and then have it settle there. Here it is on ones. Very fast. Shoot the same thing on twos. And if I were doing this, I would do this thing in here, give it even more. You'd, you'd, you'd watch that. What's that? Five, six, seven. Same thing again with the side to side head going up. One's very fast. And now on twos.
again, after the uh, head and body have settled, he would probably have done the arms whipping around counteraction here. Or his hat flew off up there, and the hat is up here. And as this arm went round, he grabbed the hat. Here it is in slow motion. Here's one where the belly stays put on the anticipation. And then as we accent up, the belly goes down. As he gets up there, his belly catches up and the feet pedal. Here's a more elaborate one where we anticipate the anticipation. The head goes up before it goes down. And then side to side and up. The belly goes down and then up as the head finally goes down. The belly then settles. Again, after the head and body have settled, he would probably have done the arms whipping around counteraction here. Or his hat flew off up there, and the hat is up here. And as this arm went round, he grabbed the hat. Endless variations. Here it is in slow motion. We've done the take. Now, as he takes his hat off, we can be inventive. It goes up on twos, with a back and forth vibrate on ones. Then the head snaps down on one frame, up with stretched eyes on one. Then the head mass up on one, the head mass down for one, and then settles on twos. You can go mad with endless variations. So you can see within a, within a simple take, you can get a hell of a lot of, uh, a lot of mileage out of it. I've done it all from the front. We could do them from the side. But I think you, you've got it. Would you do anything special on the eight breakdown on that one? Uh, no, no, you could do, why, it's awful fast, but why not try it, try what you can see. I'm just giving you the bear, the bear, the raw, we can always throw everything off. And that's why I'm showing you this stuff, you can, you can, uh, you can go on endlessly on these little crutches, different variations. These little formulas and devices are just building blocks on which we can build endless variations. You can throw them away and start fresh, but these are based on principles developed by a lot of very clever people. I, I saw the most wonderful take in a Danny Kaye film, and uh, 
it was, it's, uh, which film? It's um, The Court Jester. And Basil Rathbone, the villain, there's about three heads of guys. There's a guy here, and there's a guy here, and Basil Rathbone is listening to this guy or something, and he's down here. Uh, he's sort of, he's the villain, and he's sort of um, like that. Something that he's, he's down here listening to this fellow. And he did the most marvelous take. And I thought, it's one frame? He didn't do any anticipate. And it jumped, you know, you had three guys to look at. And it was very subtle. All that happened was the head went, it, I mean, didn't even do that. Wait a minute. He, they were telling him something he didn't like. And he went, and I said, I bet you it's one frame. I bet you it's one frame. And it was marvelous. He did, he's there. There's an in-between. Must be that little here, proportionate to the screen. And the eye is the same. There's no change in the expression. There's one in-between there, one frame. The next frame is another in-between. So you have two in-betweens going up with no change of expression. The head just goes up, sort of to there. And then you had the top of the take. It wasn't even as far up as that. It was actually, I'm, I'm exaggerating it. It was to there. And it cushioned back in about three or four drawings, about that much, to another to a more relaxed thing as, as he, and his eyes changed uh, on the up. And it was like an electric shock. And it was so strong, I thought, because there wasn't an anticipate. He's a good actor, he was a great villain, even though he was exaggerating his villainness, villainliness. Um, it was just, and you read it like that. I love to get off the formula. Love to see anything that is off the formula. It's only on the formula because we're lazy and habit riddled, conditioned, and, and we're afraid to get off. The, and certainly all the executives are afraid of getting this mad artist that are going to get off the formula. A very terrific top director, tremendously successful, said to me when he's looking at some of my stuff, which was, he said, this isn't following any known formula, Dick. And I said, well, no, I guess not. I, I'm just doing it. And he said, hmm. He says, maybe that's a good thing. Hmm. But you do want to be rich, don't you? <laughs> so off the formula, please. We don't need, all these rules can be ignored. About the use of Swatch and Stretch, um... Is it safe to try to use it if you're doing something that's not necessarily cartoony and you can sneak it in there for, to help it out with something? Or should the timing and performance and posing be more important? I mean, like, if you're, if you're animating a realistic object, yeah. but you feel it needs more oomph, will you yeah. slip in Swash and Stretch, or will you I, maybe I, change how you pose something? I would try to not to. I, I would, if you, you know, if you were doing a, a long-headed in-between, if somebody was here, and he has to look very quickly over here, Whoops. I would put in a, what you would call, uh, you would put in a motion blur, wasn't it? You put a, they used to call it a long headed in between. <laughs> Over there for one frame. I would do that just to get a, a fast effect. Let's do it in slow motion. Now, everything on ones. Again. Now, everything on twos. Now we'll use 
two blurs. The head is on twos, but the blurs are on ones. Again. Now we'll use three blurs. The head is still on twos, but the blurs are on ones. Again. Now on this, we'll use one blur and show it in slow motion. Same thing with two blurs in slow motion. We'll use mostly three blurs on this mouse. Now in slow motion. Ken Harris showed me this hammering action on ones using just three drawings. Same blur coming back as going forward. This is one of the very few cases where you can shoot the sequence in reverse. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, etc. But I wouldn't put a cartoony thing in the middle of a realistic thing. I try to keep, I put motion blur, if I could get it, in, to, in, in but I wouldn't do the cartoony thing. I wouldn't mix the media, if right. you see what I mean. Well, because my observation, like in a lot of computers, I see a lot of people take an easy out and they put a squash in when they don't need it. Yes, you know, it makes it look well, that's what I'm trying to undermine every, all these animators because they were so conditioned by squash and stretch because of the early cartoons and, and any of the books written by the old guys who did the early cartoons. Or something. You really don't need it. And, and uh, I always tried to avoid it except in this super can thing. And I did it into the ground. The other interesting thing is nobody noticed I'd done it with that commercial. They just didn't, they just accepted it. There were no changes. And they said, ah, oh, that's funny. But these guys all looked like everybody was hitting them with electrodes, you know, electric shocks, 19 electric shocks in 30 seconds. <laughs> everybody accepted it, amazing. But I, I, I think the, when we come to face action, I, I prefer to call it, instead of squash and stretch, and stretch, I, I like to call it compression which is breaking my, it's a longer word, which I hate, and distension. Uh, I'm going to distend this jaw, right? I'm going to distend it. And I'm going to compress this face. Um, I find if I don't use the word squash and stretch in my head, <laughs> if I think I'm going to distend this guy's jaw or arms or something, um, it takes me away from, I don't think. As soon as you say squash and stretch, you think of this rubber duck stuff. Fine, great respect to the rubber duck stuff, but I want to think differently. I want to think of what's actually happening, which you're, you're, compress you're compressing or you're distending. And, and uh, 
it gets you out of the conditioned reflex, out of the habit of thinking that way. We use all these terms like squash and stretch or compression and distension, but they're really just different ways of saying the same thing. Some of these formulas and principles and cliches are really useful, the result of years of experience. The great thing is to learn them, get them into your bloodstream, and then you can extend on them. And then you can throw them away, but you've still got the benefit of the information built in. Next session, we'll deal with more formulas, this time with stagger vibrations, including the best one, which very few people know about. The takes which we've been studying are actually accents, and after vibrations, we'll get more fully into accents, starting with how to accent body actions. Mm -hmm.